Welcome, welcome to the evening show with Jackie Brambles, where every night at this time we settle in for a great conversation with one of our favourite artists of the 70s, 80s and 90s and enjoy some of their most significant musical memories. Uh, that track, Set Me Free, got to number seven in 1986 for the Pride of Birmingham and tonight's special guest, delighted to welcome Jackie Graham. Hello, Jackie. How you doing, darling? I'm great and so pleased to actually have you here on the show for our great conversation, especially because I know that, I mean, you're always gigging, but extra busy at the moment, preparing to go out on the road for quite some time uh, with last night's guest on The Great Conversation, actually, Jeffrey Daniel and Shalimar for their 40th anniversary Friends tour. Oh, yes, yes, that's right, my baby. Um, and that's going to be great because I'm, you know, I'm going to be hanging out with some people that I haven't seen for the longest time. Uh, you know, I think we're going to have a great time, darling. It's, it's just bringing memories back to people, hopefully, and, you know, and having fun on the, on the night. I know last year you did a very big tour with the, um, the Giants of Soul and Gwen Dickey of Rose Royce was on the bill with you, a good friend of yours. And uh, you said back then you were going to try and talk her out of retiring because she was calling it her farewell tour, wasn't she? Uh, do you... Ever Ever have a notion to stop Jackie or is it just part of your DNA to be out there performing all the time and we you know we get to a certain age darling and I'm thinking and I, for a while I'm thinking you know I have my turn and you know I'm so grateful that I've been around for as long as I have done because 80s I thought I'd only be here for five minutes but you know but people still give me so much love darling and and they still feel what I have to offer and you know I'm, and I'm so hungry for everybody that I can't stop <laughs> Got to number nine in 1976, then charted again in 1998 for Rose Royce. Lead vocals, of course, by Gwen Dickey, an old pal of tonight's special guest, Jackie Graham. And as we spoke about earlier, Gwen, thinking about retiring from the large scale tours, not something you see yourself doing, Jackie. But what about the day to day nature of touring? I mean, do you enjoy being out on the road nonstop, living out of a suitcase? Or do you prefer to get back home after gigs as much as you can? You know something, for, for a good few years, that has been the case. Because, um, you know, I, I've done some shows where, you know, you've been away for a while and so on. But, but a lot of them have been, you know, uh, uh, going home. Because, you know, you can, wherever, depending on how, how far you are and where you, you're playing, um, you know, you can stay overnight and then take your time and come back the next day. We tend to do the shows and then come back. Uh, you know, straight away because you know, because yeah. of traffic on the motorway and then, you know there's always motorway um, um, roadworks and stuff like that and they're diverting you off motorways and stuff like that so yeah it's nicer to come back when it's quiet so I end up you know having a lion at home yeah nice but, to wake up yeah. in your own bed but touring you know I think it's been a long time since I've done the, the touring touring properly so but I'm looking forward to it well listen let's go back we, we, we want to kind of get a, a soundtrack of your life and did, was it a musical family is there a is there a particular track that reminds you of your childhood oh I mean there's loads of things that um great no, they weren't musical as such I mean um my grandmother you know we, uh, we, we my grand comes from Jamaica and stuff like that and she, we, there's lots of, a lot of reggae and ska and blue beat and that kind of thing mm. in, the, in the household but i i have two um older uncles that that um were around at the time you know and they were blues and soul and r&b and that kind of thing right so i, I heard a lot of things. but then growing up there was the chart stuff so you know i really got tuned into the Jackson Five and the Osmonds. Oh. Because they were our age group. Of course, of course. Did you have a favorite one in both groups? Oh, yes, I did. I did. And cool. I, and I, 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 well, obviously, Donny, uh, I, I, I've met along the way anyway. So, yeah. A lovely, lovely man. You've got um, the Osmonds doing, one bad apple, don't spoil a whole bunch. Of and I'm going, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And they were on my wall, I have to tell you. Oh, were they, they, they were yeah. the posters on the oh, wall? Oh, they were, yeah, they were the, the kids that were on my wall, darling. One Bad Apple, The Osmonds. That was the theme song to their animated cartoon series, if you can remember seeing that back in the day. And they were the poster boys on the bedroom wall, along with the Jackson 5 for our special guest tonight. And we'll be back with more great conversation from Jackie Graham next.
Welcome back to the evening show with me, Jackie Brambles, where it's just you, me, and our special guest, Jackie Graham, cozying on in for our great conversation and a meander through all her significant musical memories. Uh, Jackie, you mentioned before the break that when you were a kid, you were obsessed with the Osmonds. You later got to work. Um, meet Donnie, uh, who, by the way, folks, is going to be on this show very soon. Earlier this week, we had Marlon Jackson on the show because you also worship the Jackson Five, right? But, you know, when Michael Jackson came out, when I, you know, was at school and he came out with, you know, the ABC and Stop the Love You Save and all this kind of thing, um, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they're kids. And then my, my, my very first gig really was the Jackson 5. Oh, was it? And how old were you when you went to see them? Baby girl, I think I might have been about 14. <gasps> wow. 14, yeah, 14 or something like that. And it was at my, my hometown, because I come from Birmingham. Okay. Yeah. Because when I came on, I say that all the time, darling, because when I came on the scene, everybody thought I was Birmingham, Alabama. And I said, no, darling, <laughs> it's West Midland. <laughs> but but when it, uh, in my hometown in Birmingham at the Odeon, um, you know, they, they, they were coming to town and us, us kids in school were saying, oh, we're going to see Michael. And, and I'm going to my granny, granny, please, can we have tickets? Can, 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 you, can we go? She bought three tickets, okay, for myself, my younger brother and her. Oh, what did she think of the Jacksons? Uh, what well, she said, she was looking at the thinking, look at these kids and what are you, two, what, you know, what, look at you, what, you know, what are you lot doing and stuff like that. But we, she didn't know whether we, you know, we were musical and, and that anyway. But, but yes, um, she loved it. She loved it. She thought, well, why is everybody standing up? Why don't they sit down and listen? And, but now nah, we had to go with the flow chick. In the end, we had to all get up <laughs> and, jam with, <laughs> and jam with the Jackson 5, truly. ABC, the Jackson 5, and going to see the Jackson 5 live in concert in Birmingham was tonight's special guest, Jackie Graham's very first gig. That's setting the bar pretty high at a tender age. Uh, so as you grew up then, Jackie, what memories do you have of the musical influences that were around you at that time? They were they were wonderful memories. Then, but my first sort of um, when my uncles then sort of came back and they were sort of around us. Um, growing up, I suppose I'd be about I don't know ten or something like that, uh, 10, 11, 12, something like that. Um, and my uncles they were very into um, uh, Al Green, oh, and right. I used to have a little Saturday job. And and and, and the the uh, owner of the uh, boutique that I, I worked at, um, and yeah, and, and young back then, you, youngsters could work. That's right. You know, you know, and have a Saturday job. You you know, you're too young to do it now, but you you can have a Saturday job, but you have to be a certain age group. Yeah. So back then, um, and I used to love to hear in the guy's name was Sugar. It was his shop. because <laughs> <laughs> he was so sweet. Yeah, exactly. Um, but he used to have this album. He had this album that he introduced me to, which is the sort of thing my uncles were listening to, which was Al Green, Let's Stay Together. Oh. So I think that really brought sort of music, music, really to, to focus for me as well. Because, I mean, they were listening to um, Al Green and, and, you know, and, and like I said, the, 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 the sort of jazz people and that sort yeah. of thing. Uh, and, and they also had Motown and the blues and the stacks. Yeah. Soul that they were listening to. But, but I think Al Green and working in a shop and I could and I could play anything I wanted. Oh my gosh, let's stay together. That album was something else, darling. And did you realise then, Jackie, that you had a voice? Did you realise that you could sit when you're singing along to those records? Did you did you know how good you were? No. <laughs> no. no, my baby. I just, I just enjoyed singing um, myself and my, my brother, and then um, my cousin, uh, my younger cousin, was at the house as well. So we would pretend to be the Jackson Five, and you know, and I tried to, you know, give each of them a harmony or something to do. But I, I, I never, I just enjoyed it. I never really knew that this will be a career. It was just a, a thing I just loved to do, sing at home. And we all did because we were always singing to music. Music was always in the house. And and, and, when, and how then were you discovered? Why did you sort of later on um, figure out that you you wanted to do it as a, as a career? That, that, my darling, is, uh, was my boyfriend's doing, uh, who's my husband now, okay? <laughs> now, we, I, by this time, now, I'd gone to secondary school and three schools got together to make this comprehensive school, okay? It was a girls' school, which is what I used to go to, a Camden girls' school, and m my hubby went to the mixed school, which was Folatosa, and there was Ickneal Boys' School, 
Okay, so the three schools got together. Right. And I, I used to do little concerts and little, you know, they, you know, they put on little concerts and stuff like that. That's when I started to to come out there, you know, I'm thinking, oh, and everybody say, oh, Jackie can sing. Jackie, you know, she's the singer, she's the singer. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, eventually I started to go out with, with, with Tony, but because I was brought up by my grandmother, uh, she was very strict and I wasn't allowed out, okay? So it meant that Tony came to our house seven nights a week. Right. Uh, and um, so one of the nights he was a bit late coming down and I said, what, you know, what, what happened? And he said, I've got you an audition. I'm going, an audition? For what? And there was a, an ad in our local Birmingham Evening Mail, our new, local newspaper. One, there was a band getting together and they wanted a, a singer. And he got me the audition to do that. That's now how it came in. You know, I start by this time I'm yeah. 16, 17. Um, and I joined my wow. very first band. And how long did it take before sort of people started to take notice in the industry when you were first discovered? Oh, okay. When to cross over now to the national and international arena, I did a, I used to work at a, a, a uh, obviously, my, the band that I was working with, um, Club, Club Universities, uh, and that band was Ferrari. But uh, there was another band that was in Birmingham, a local Birmingham, which was a jazz funk instrumental band. Right. And they they needed a vocalist to sing a, a, a song that they'd written. Uh, and they were going to, I think, uh, by, uh, they, behind the scenes, they were dealing with people in London, OK? Uh, and, but they said, you know, we would like to see you with a front person because there was anybody in that band that would really front it because it was just instrumental stuff going on. But they were they were a good band. Anyway, I, came, the, I had some time off from my band and, and they said, Jack, you know, we got some showcase gigs coming up and we got three gigs. You, will you be available? I said, yeah, yeah. And I went down and that's when I got spotted too. And so, and, and the, the, the people who just the, discovered you already was managing links as David Grant was, was sort of a part, was a part of that back that's then. Exactly so. And, and then, and the, then there was Derek Bramble who was a part of, um, the, the, you know, the, the recording side of things, you know, the writing side of things, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so they did some, some demos with me. And then I, uh, I think about 84, I think it was 84, 84, I got signed to EMI. Right. Um, and from that point on then, I, we we um, we did some songs. And, uh, and my first album was Heaven Knows, and that would be about 85, okay? And Heaven Knows was a big underground um, soul hit. Uh, we did Could It Be, and, and that was a, a big sort of national and international hit, and that was with David. And then I had... Uh, my first solo national and international hit was Round and Around. Round and Around got to number nine in 1985, the first solo hit for our special guest on the evening show tonight, Jackie Graham. And we will be back with more great conversation from Jackie and Jackie next. Greatest Hits Radio, it's the evening show with me, Jackie Brambles. And if you're just joining us, this is the middle hour of the show where we get to relish a great conversation and some gorgeous musical memories from our special guest, who is one of our favourite artists from the 70s, 80s or 90s. And tonight we're so very happy to have Jackie Graham on the show with us. So, Jackie, for you, what were the crucial factors, would you say, that led eventually to your chart success? At the time, I, EMI really didn't know what to do with me. Thank you, Gigi, by the grace of God. Uh, you know, the public was the one and the radio stations, right? They took me to their hearts and they loved the songs. And it was through them that, that, that I really got the push. So thanks to the radio stations and to the, um, and to the, the public, you know, I'm here to tell the tale, darling. And the songs, are, you know, Evergreen, they're still here and, they, and people still love to hear them. So when you did hit the big time, was it everything you imagined it would be? It was a whirlwind chick. And, you know, it, it just went so quickly. I didn't even have time to absorb what was going on because I was being pulled, you know, here, there and everywhere. And I was pinching myself, girlfriend, because I'm thinking, oh, and I'm plus at that, that time, I'm doing Top of the Pops. And it's like, this is interesting. I'm thinking, oh, my, I've made it, I've made it, I've made it. Now, I'm old enough to have to be aware that you know I you know I could be here for five minutes, but you know, baby girl, I'm just going to embrace everything that was going on and, and and enjoy it and everything else. Do you remember who was on the that top of the pops with you the first time you did it? The very oh, you know something, baby. Uh, I don't know because I remember people like Glenn Fry. I, uh, I remember people like um, uh, the the two Phils, Phil Collins and, and Phil Bailey. All these people that I looked up to, yeah. and I was in the chart amongst them, and probably you know higher than some of them, and you know, yeah. and I'm thinking, oh, I, I, I can't believe it. Easy, 
and and you sort of have over the I mean obviously that first collaboration with David Grant you know was sort of this catapult in, in, in into the stratosphere but over the years you've had other sort of collaborations tell me the story about how you ended up um, going on going on tour and collaborating with Michael McDonald oh baby girl well, he, oh, he, 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 he is awesome. Okay. Now, let me tell you the story. Now, I was watching a documentary, right, on Quincy Jones. Right. And, and within that documentary, there was um, Michael McDonald and James Ingram singing Yam Will Be There, recording right. that. And I'm going, and I was a big fan of Michael's voice anyway from the Doobie Brothers era, but I never knew what Michael, like, Michael looked like and everything. So I was thinking, that's Michael McDonald. Oh my gosh, he sounds great. And, 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 and you know, Philip Ingram and so on. But Michael co wrote a track for me that I ended up singing with James Ingram, which is Philip's brother. Right. Okay. Because Michael wasn't able to do the vocals with me on that particular track. Anyway, because he was here, there, and everywhere. Anyway, that's another story. So, so with the, this now, um, I saw Michael. Then he had a, a hit with a lady by the name of Patti LaBelle. Oh, and yeah. That was called On My Own. All right. Oh, wow. Wow. And Michael came, my, Michael came to England. Okay. Now I'm saying to, to my Tony, I'm going, Tony, Tony, Michael's coming to, you know, and he's going to be in Birmingham. He's, if I'm not working, is there any way we can get tickets to go and see Michael? I'd love to see Michael, in, you know. And, 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 and. Anyway, I think this was on the Wednesday I think it was a Wednesday. Was it? Um, Tony says, we've got it. We've got it. And I'm going to think, we've got, is it Michael McDonald? Is it, we've got tickets to go and see Michael McDonald. I'm getting excited now. And I'm yeah. jumping. And he realizes that he didn't tell me that he's put me forward to be a guest on Michael McDonald's show. <laughs> now, girlfriend, can you imagine? Uh, well, I, you know, I'm thinking, what's wrong with you? I can't sing like Patti LaBelle because this is what they wanted somebody to guess. Yeah, me, yeah, to of course. That. Anyway, big shoes to fill. Oh, tell me something. And so I had to meet Michael right the following day, which was like the first day. Yeah. Birmingham Odeon, my hometown. Okay. Um, to do the show with him that night. No time to think about it. No time to, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I got to the Odeon the following following day and it was sound check. And I'm listening to these people play up a storm, listening to Michael's voice. I'm going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Anyway. He does his bit, and then he, he calls out, you know, is Jackie here? And so I get up on stage, and he says to me, you know, is the key all right for you? Now, baby girl, I know that I don't know what key I sing in, <laughs> and I know that I don't sing like Lone Patty LaBelle. <laughs> and I love the woman, but you have to get, and I'm thinking, I, you know, I've, I've got to look as if I know what I'm doing here. Yeah. And I said, um, I said um, okay, darling, I said, just, just, uh, if you play, you can, you can see what you think, and see what, you know, if it works for you. With that, we did the soundtrack. The, the whole bunch, of, I mean, just the way they greeted me, just going on stage and talking to them. The, the, you know, the whole of the band and Michael and his family was there, his mom, his cousins, his small, his wife. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what lovely people. So many times, said it was. Happy, and I was sure. On my own, got to number two in 1986 for Michael McDonald and Patti LaBelle, whose shoes Jackie Graham was asked to fill by Michael McDonald when he was performing in Birmingham, and she knocked it out the park. Uh, so, Jackie, to wrap things up for tonight, we need you to pick our final track for the hour, please. Something that you find yourself putting on again and again to uplift or inspire or comfort you. Ooh, girlfriend, now you're talking. You know, you know people like the OJs. Ah, you know the OJs and um, and I love love and the temptations like for the love of money. There's so many, and there's the, 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 the people like Stevie Wonder. You know, um, what, what track? What track of his really moves you? Higher ground, I think. Mm. Yeah, keep on believing. Keep on, you know. Yeah, I think something like that. Higher Ground by Stevie Wonder from his brilliant Inner Visions album. The final musical choice from tonight's special guest, Jackie Graham. Jackie, what a treat it's been. Thank you, Jackie. I know I go on a bit, but, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, so much to tell you about. OK. <laughs> Listen, it's been such a great conversation. And let's remind people that they can catch you live on the Shalimar Friends 40th anniversary tour, kicking off June 1st in Liverpool and then all over the UK. All right, sweetheart. God bless. Cheers, Jackie. You take care. Bye-bye, darling. Jackie Graham. What a lovely lady.